I could go on about that a bit more, but I'm running out of time. So um, let me just move on. So what, what, you understand what I'm saying here about how masquerading is objectivity. We have all these selective judgments being made for us. Sometimes it's just a question of slipping in the consensus, or PR, or propaganda, all those kind, or those kind of logistical pressures I've just been talking about. They're very powerful. And insofar as they are at work, instead of we, the hacks, consciously making these judgments, we are losing out in the battle to try to tell the truth. Let me just read you actually a quick thing from a really great book I think to read about reporting technique is Harry Evans's memoir, Good Times, Bad Times which gives the backstory on some of those great tales that the Sunday Times told when it was still a respectable newspaper. And um, there's a section there where he talks about... This is the, the time frame here is Murdoch has taken over, Harry has been moved to edit the Daily Paper, and he has been given as a deputy a guy called Charlie Douglas Hume, who, who now sadly is dead. Uh, Charlie Douglas Hume is a very different sort of journalist to Harry. And what's happened is that Harry has got hold of some paperwork which shows that the lead content of petrol at that time was so high that children who lived near motorways were ingesting lead in petrol fumes and it was actually damaging their brains. This eventually became a campaign which, which is why you buy unleaded petrol now. This is the beginning of that process. So Harry's got this stuff, so he says, this is great. We can do a big front page story, big, big backgrounder inside, big leader comment. But then he falls ill and he's at home for a day or two and the paper is edited by Charlie. And when Harry opens the paper, he's very disappointed to find that the story hasn't been projected as a big thing. It's just a little thing on page five, no leader comment, no front page, no big piece. And Harry says to Charlie, well, what happened? And Charlie says, well, I didn't think that story accorded with normal news values. And this is what Harry writes. What are these normal news values? Is it abnormal to regard the poisoning of children as a subject for persistent inquiry and for vigorous comment? This was the implication. And it perfectly reflected the moral torpor of the Douglas Hume horizontal school of journalism. It waits on events. Speeches, reports, and ceremonials occur, and they're rendered into words in print along a straight assembly line. Scandal and injustice go unremarked unless someone else discovers them. Judgments have to be made about what is important. They're moral judgments. The vertical school is active. It sets its own agenda. So that's what I'm trying to get to in knocking down the, the idea of objectivity. Okay, third golden rule, much quicker. The idea that we should always give both sides of the story. I would say that if the object of our work is to tell the truth, we should give both sides of the story only in the rather unusual circumstance that both sides have equal parts of the story and are willing to give it to us. That isn't really what goes on. What goes on is a kind of production of nonsense in which facts are constantly neutralised and made safe. Um, if, I, if I just give you a little paradigm example of what I'm talking about, which I... I, 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 I do I explain at the beginning? I do these masterclasses in reporting that go on all day, and I always give this little example. If, if so, you walk into a room armed with your notebook and your pen, and there are two men looking out of the window. And one man says, outside, the sky is blue and the sun is shining. And the other man says, outside, the sky is grey and it is raining. Now the conventional, balanced, give both sides of the story way of reporting that is to go back to the office and write in a frenzy of excitement, controversy last night surrounded the same thing together. Whether man A says this, man B says that, I don't know what the truth is, you decide. This is not reporting, this is crap. At best this is journalism. It's very, very quick and easy to do that because you're not making any attempt to check and discover the truth. Your job is to find out what the bloody weather's like. And if it turns out that the sky is blue and the sun is shining, this guy over here who says that it's grey and raining has no place in our story. He can just go. He doesn't belong there. Our job is not to become a conduit for misinformation for our readers and viewers and listeners. You could turn the story on him. If he turns out to be an umbrella salesman corrupting weather forecasting, fine, let's expose him. Maybe he's a human interest story. He can't see and he's pretending he can. Well, all right. But by and large, what, what, really what this comes down to is this. The, the kind of model of journalist reporting is, here comes the hack, and he picks up, or if we're honest, he makes up an allegation. If this allegation happens to be true, and he takes it to the other side, say, what do you say about this? He will get from the other side, probably from the PR department of the government or corporation, a statement which is designed to dilute the truth. And if what he's saying is true, when he, he locks onto it, this denial dilution statement, he is reducing his truth. If, however, it's even worse, if, however, what he's picked up or made up is false, 
He then gets the denial from the other side, and unless this is grossly libelous against somebody who can afford to sue, this then becomes a license to print falsehood. Right? It's, the, it's, it's a technique that's constantly used by tabloids. They just run garbage about people with a denial locked on the end. So do you see in the, in the center of this, it has absolutely nothing to do with telling the truth, this balance thing. It's an opt-out, a cop-out. I would say it's a bit like the business of constructing stories out of quotes, that if when you've done your job with the best will in the world, you can't discover what the truth is, then all right, in the cause of